what will endure and become quality that sustains itself over a very long period of time. Was it worthy and educational? Probably not, but it really, really touched a nerve. The best short films for lifelong learning recommended by teachers for teachers. This is Short Films Teachers Love with your host, Richard Lee. We're having a discussion here amongst colleagues yesterday around the fact that we have many adults, people in their 30s and 40s, who will contact us and talk about how much they've loved certain programs they watched 30 years ago or 25 years ago that we produced. For example, probably our most successful international export we've made is a program called Round the Twist, which I probably can't keep now the number of times where I have a Round the Twist t-shirt that I got when I first worked here 15, 20 years ago. On weekends, I'll be in a supermarket somewhere in the checkout and have my Round the Twist t-shirt on. And the 25-year-old checkout person will look at me and go, I loved that show. So it was entertaining. Was it worthy and educational? Probably not. But it really, really touched a nerve. So I suppose for us at the ACTF, when we look at making a quality program, it's got to be a great story and it's got to be something we think will resonate with the audience. Um, that can mean it's hilariously funny. It can mean it's touching. It can mean that it does touch on issues that haven't been touched on before or it represents the stories of people that haven't been represented before, whether it's minorities or uh, from Indigenous communities, etc. But it's got to be a good story. We will circle back to this question of uh, quality, I'm sure, as we go on. But I, I want to um, launch now into the first film that you've chosen to recommend to me. And this one is called Special School Students Identify Benefits of Digital Learning. You've got to make a decision as a group. You can't just make a decision on your own. It teaches you all different kind of skills and things that you thought you wouldn't do, you've suddenly done. Lots of new skills that you can learn as a group, as a group, You've got to see behind what happens in a film. Using the device, I have made nine movies of my own. At first, um, it, it kind of sat a little bit uncomfortably for me because I, I kept wondering, is this a promo or is it a rough compilation of a few teaching sessions? But what it, what it did do was really give me a window into the world of kids using technology and kids with a range of special needs and their enthusiasm for media production was infectious. Why did you want to recommend this short? I, I love this. And I'll give you a little bit of background. I was involved in making this movie and when I was working in the Victorian Education Department in the Digital Learning Branch, where part of my role was to go out and showcase good practice of where kids and teachers were doing interesting things with technology that actually was benefiting learning and teaching. And I've been working with a guy who was a filmmaker who'd been doing this movie-making project with those kids at Nepean Special School, which is in the southeast part of the Melbourne suburbs here in Victoria. And what stood out for me is they could articulate really clearly how this enabled them to be creative, tell their story, to work with others in a way that was really powerful rather than it just being, oh, this is some technology, isn't this great, we can go shoot some stuff. Um, for those kids, they could not have done what they talked about without the fact that it was a nimble, flexible device like a tablet. The second film is called I Think, A Load of Rubbish. How can you tell what is rubbish and what isn't rubbish? Well, the garbage bin makes rubbish rubbish. <laughs> People think of rubbish as dirty and smelly and flies hanging around it and all that. It's not what we do with it, it's sort of like how we think of it. It's kind of how we think of it and it, you know it's such an existential sort of question that he, and you know kids of the primary age are really they are thinking deeply and philosophically about a lot of things and we don't give them credit for that often enough, I don't think, do we? Absolutely. And there's the beautiful, I think, sort of towards the end where one of the kids is talking about they've been on a holiday in the States and there were homeless people. I saw all these people on the streets and people just stepping over them and walking around them, stepping on their legs like they're um, a dead cat or something. 
They just judge them as like they were rubbish and dirt. They don't deserve to be judged as rubbish. So his understanding of how people can be treated in a way that we don't believe is acceptable. Uh, and then the discussion about what happens when you pass away and the, are you treated like rubbish if you're buried in the ground? Well, you should, you know, as long as your memory lives on, you're not rubbish because your memory is, is obviously important and uh, means something to people. So, there, yeah, some beautiful, as you say, existential discussion. There's, there's some big themes that come out, yeah. And, and also I'd noticed that it, it actually did feel a little bit dated and yet because it was such a timeless, there were so many big themes in there and, and even in environmental aspect to it as well you know what you know that we can reuse things you know there's lots to draw on for teachers to use so have you have you seen that used in different ways in classrooms certainly in my first stint here given just say it is a little bit dated mm. uh, it was used a lot i know back probably 10 15 years ago mm. i suspect now probably because it does look a little bit old school mm. the back has not been used as much but i think as an idea or a concept mm given that now that um, kids in classes have much more capacity to do their own visuals in terms of whether they want to do stop motion animation or they want to create uh, some visuals over the top of audio. I think it's just a great example of how you could do something similar mm. today where you interview, you have your audio, mm. and then what can we overlay that adds power to that from a visual perspective? All right, let's, um, let's talk about the last film, Stephanie's Little Lunch. what happened yesterday at Little Lunch. Yesterday at Little Lunch, it was a casual free day and we could wear whatever we wanted. I was so excited. I dressed up as... I don't remember. But anyway, so I was coming into the library to read my favourite book, but something went terribly wrong. As a, as a finished piece, I have to say, I always find there's a little bit weird because they're a mixture of that really high production values, you know, wonderful sound, beautifully shot, and really average, you know, poor quality sound, dodgy editing, the whole lot. So for the benefit of those who haven't seen what's going on, tell us tell us the background of this. We developed an app linked to the Lunch TV show that basically lets you make your own episode of the TV show. And um, it was released at the start of this year, 2016. It's a free app, so it can be used by schools um, anywhere really. You're right in terms of, I suppose, the production values and the example of uh, the, the video, the Stephanie's Little Lunch, is just one of about 40 or 50 ones I could have shown. Um, I think the acting, it's pretty good. The, the girl who's the main character is terrific. Um, it's a very small school, Woolsthorpe, which is in the um, southwest of Victoria, down near the coast. The school only has 40 students. So it's a tiny school, um, and I used it as an example of where they very enthusiastically, they made three or four of the videos and submitted them in the competition. Um, they don't have a lot of gear, they don't have a lot of equipment, um, but it was an example of where a tiny school was able to participate in that competition. I can imagine, you know, for teachers teaching media, you know, it's a, it's a great way to get them in for students to then go, my goodness, I didn't realise it was so much work to produce quality content. <laughs> and then down the track, you know, they might buy their own little camera or get a digital SRR or get a bigger camera or whatever and plug in a microphone and, you know, all of those sort of things. So it's a great entree into that whole world for them to step into. So That's right. Uh, and I, I agree 100%. And I think We've already seen feedback from some of the teachers involved saying the kids now want to go off and be able to do more advanced, sophisticated things using other equipment, but now at least they've got a sense of, right, well, I need a good story. I need a good script. We need to think about the characters. We need a good plot. Then we need to worry about our technical bits and our camera and our audio. But if we haven't got a good story, well, those other bits don't matter so much. So you're right. It's putting all the bits of the jigsaw together. Hopefully then it inspires the kids to say, I'll go and do something even better now. To listen to the full conversation, join us on SoundCloud, iTunes or Stitcher. For extra notes and community support, join our Facebook group today. This show is a proud member of the Education Podcast Network. Podcasts for educators, podcasts by educators. To learn more, visit edupodcastnetwork.com.